what's going on guys welcome back to a brand new video and today we're going to talk about some sonic frontiers once again so for sonic frontiers we're going to be seeing the cyberspace levels in about two days from now and there's a lot to talk about and a lot to expect from cyberspace levels and what exactly is going to make these good so if you don't know what cyberspace is cyberspace is essentially the classic boost levels being put into sonic frontiers and it's going to be scattered all throughout the world you're going to be able to access cyberspace by getting orbs and going through a portal gate and this portal gate will of course lead us to cyberspace the thing about cyberspace that we know so far is that they will be reusing level theme assets from sonic generations so far we have seen green hill and sky sanctuary leaked footage and honestly this may be a big bummer for a lot of people that level themes are being reused once again especially green hill zone but in my own personal opinion i think the level design matters way more to me and if the level design can manage to be good i don't really care what the level theme is but that's kind of where we are right now we have to look at what we've seen and they're very small snippets of cyberspace so it doesn't determine the whole level and the flow of the level but so far on the sky sanctuary level that we have seen that has been leaked it does look pretty straightforward almost sonic forces level but there was one section of the level that intrigued me and gives me a little bit of hope for cyberspace levels and it's the fact that there was a top path a bottom path and a rail path all next to each other now they could all just lead to the same place but i think having multiple pathways is something that is good and it's always going to be good to have in your boost games forces lacked a lot of multiple pathways and a lot of them felt very arbitrary and out of the way to get to and not in a good way for example luminous forest in sonic forces there's the part where you're boosting down a half pipe and there's this one random little spot where you can just jump across and get to a little nice shortcut but it doesn't provide much outside of a red ring it doesn't feel like a true new pathway it should be built like Sonic Generations, and honestly, this should be a whole video on its own, but Sonic Generations is built like Sonic 3 in my opinion. You have the three pathways. There's the top pathway, which is usually the fastest, the bottom, which is the slowest, and the middle, which is the normal pathway. But the top pathway is harder to stay on. The bottom path is easier to get to, but harder to get through. That kind of level design punishes you for your skill or rewards you for your skill. And Sonic Generations is kind of built like that as well. I also think Sonic at least shares his level design philosophy a little bit as well. Finding the unique pathways to get through the level is what makes these games so interesting. And Sonic Forces lost that immensely just by letting you go forward and that's it. And here and there they'll have some arbitrary pathways that don't really do much or last that long. It doesn't feel like you're exploring a new part of the level, instead you're on the left side of the same area. But if Frontiers can adapt at least 10% of the generation's design philosophy, then it'll be better off than Forces off rip. But that's not saying it's going to be great though. Forces level design isn't that much of a high bar. So far in leaks about cyberspace, there has been no mention of 2D. We haven't seen any 2D in any of the gameplay leaks from Summer Game Fest, so 2D might actually be gone. But in case there is some 2D in this game, I won't be surprised to see it in the cyberspace levels. The cyberspace levels are already described as being bite-sized, so that's another worry that I have, is them being bite-sized may take away from the design of the level being that extravagant. It could just be short hallways like Forces, and I really hope that's not the case. Even though Sonic Frontiers is technically an open world game, and these levels kind of act as shrines like Breath of the Wild, I get that, that making them bite-sized makes sense, but in the grand scheme of things, I think people just want a good boost level and i know in the context of frontiers it does make sense because they did say at ign that you will be replaying these levels to get these vault keys in order to get a chaos emerald so we will be speed running these levels we will be getting the red rings in these levels and any other challenges that are presented and I mean, yeah, that's not a bad idea. It reminds me a little bit of Sonic Adventure 2 when you replay the game and there's different missions for each level. And it'd be cool if they did something like a hard mode like Sonic Adventure 2. Something I do think that is worth noting is that a lot of the people and journalists that got to play Sonic Frontiers, the thing that they can't talk about, which is cyberspace, which that embargo will be lifted on June 29th, by the way, they always seem to say that they actually enjoyed them and it's a pretty great part of the game. But a lot of those journalists that are saying that I know aren't seasoned veteran Sonic fans. So like a simple boost level and seeing Sonic go fast may just be enough for them. You could bring up the point of Sonic Forces, but I feel like outside of the Sonic community, the disappointment was just immensely felt where it made a lot of people even look at it the way that we were looking at it. But Frontiers to a lot of these people may be new and fresh enough to where they see Sonic going fast again in a cool open world game, 
and they think it's cool. But if the level design isn't to standards as previous games, us Sonic fans will be taking note of that. Because there are a lot of red flags. Reuse level themes. So far, we've seen forces like level design. And the term bite size being used for them. That's the three hit combo of worry. So I genuinely cannot blame people for feeling worried about Sonic Frontiers and cyberspace levels because of those things. Now obviously at the end of the day what matters the most is seeing an entire level. Seeing how it flows. Level flow is a lot more important than individual aspects of a level. Especially in boost games because if it doesn't flow well then it probably won't be a fun level. But seeing two seconds of a leaked clip isn't going to tell us much about the entire level design of the game. But there's not much we can do about that because of Sega's poor marketing of this game so far. This is still one of the worst marketing for a game I've seen in my entire life. It honest to god feels like they are sabotaging Sonic Frontiers. But I've, I've reached a point in my brain with this game that is no longer a tug of war of is it looking good or is it looking bad. I'm just at the point where I'm just going to wait for the game to come out. And if it slaps, it slaps. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. That's kind of where I am right now. I feel like I don't really have the mental capacity anymore to like debate about this game or even like go that super in depth with my thoughts about this game anymore because we've barely seen the game. And there's just so much semantics surrounding this game and I'm kind of just done with it. I kind of just want it to come out now at this point and just see if I enjoy it. And it's sad to say that because it's only been a month of marketing and it's been a long month. But overall, those are my thoughts on what the cyberspace levels could be like based off leaks we have seen, and as well as impressions, as well as non-impressions coming from journalists. Is cyberspace something that you're worried about seeing, or are you not that worried about? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And like always, make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Oh well, whatever happens, happens.